screaming out from every mountain top. Your goodness knows no bounds. Your goodness never stops. Your mercy follows me. Your kindness fills my life. Your love amazes me. And I'll sing because you are good. And I'll dance because you are good. And I'll shout because you are good. You are good. Good to me. Good, amen. I want you to imagine with me your son comes home and he says, Mom, Dad, I'm going on a journey. And you say, Where are you going? He said, I don't know. And he said, Don't contact me. 
you won't be able to find me. And then he gives these nice words, God told me to do this. How would you respond? What would you think? At least one person is thinking. I can't see because of your mask, but I would be concerned. I would kind of wonder what in the world is happening. What's going on with this boy just going somewhere he doesn't know? Telling me he won't be able to contact me? How in the world? But this is the exact story of Abraham. Abraham goes on a journey where? God will show me. Yeah, exactly. We have that kind of... <laughs> We've all seen people that have done silly things saying, God told me. So now our minds question. Yet from the story of Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, we can find an understanding of God's responsibility for us. Not to live foolishly, but to live under the mighty hand of God. I want to draw your attention to Genesis chapter 12. If you have your Bibles, turn with me. I want to read the first three verses of Genesis chapter 12. Starting in verse 1. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, from your kindred, and from your father's house to the land that I will show you. Now that seems kind of crazy. Then verse 2 comes, and we all like verse 2. And I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you. And make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. We love verse 2 and 3. Are you with me? I mean, we like that. But verse 2 and 3 is on the other side of verse 1. It's kind of that if-then context we often see in scripture if you then I right and here is the if and he gives four statements to Abraham here is your responsibility now if if you told me God told me this I would struggle myself and yet that's exactly what God did to this patriarch Abraham and so he, he gives four statements that I want to focus on a little bit this morning. The first thing he says is, go forth from your country. Leave your country. Now many of you have left your country. Is that fulfill this command? Well, it's, it's not about geographical location. It's about the mindset. And I want to ask you a question, especially for my Ethiopian friends. How many pieces do you cut a chicken into? You all get me right away. All the non-Ethiopians are, what are you talking about? All the Ethiopians know it's 12. From the north to the south to the east to the west, everywhere in Ethiopia I ask the question, it's 12. Whether you're in Gambela or up in Tigray or over in Duradawa or down south in Kibramungas, it's 12. It doesn't matter the ethnic group, it's 12. But you cross that border to Djibouti, it's not 12. You go across the border to Kenya, it's not 12. Are we together? Why is it 12? Because we've been taught it's 12. You can ask anybody, why is it 12? Everybody has a different answer. But the foundation is we've been taught it's 12. So we always think of 12. And if I say, what about uh, 17 pieces? Exactly. <laughs> How could it be? How could you do something different than 12? And for a foreigner, like myself, when you say 12, I'm trying to think of how do you cut it into 12? Right? We try to divide it and figure out. You see, where we grow up, our country shapes our thinking pattern. And we always think we're right. We're all, we all think we're right. If we thought we were wrong, we would change. We all think we're right. But the reality is, 
Our mind has not been shaped by Christ, it's been shaped by our culture. And when Paul, or when God is speaking to Abraham, he's saying, leave your country. He says, take the mind of Christ. Don't live within the mind of your culture. Come and capture the mind of Jesus Christ. Come and find the mind of God. Know how God sees the situation. If you want to be transformed, it is including your mind. It's not where you're from. And I know Ethiopians are very proud. We are Ethiopians. But that doesn't define you. Or Brazilians or Canadians. It's children of the living God. Finding the mind of Christ. Living under the mind of Christ. Changing the way that we think and understand. The second statement that the Lord says to Abraham, He says, and go forth from your relatives or kindreds, your, your fellowship of community. You see, we trust our friends. We trust our relatives. What happens when you run into problems? You call your relatives. There's a medical problem. There's a financial problem. There's a crisis. Who do we call? We call our relatives. Who do we trust? We trust our relatives. Most of the time we don't even talk to God before we call our relatives. Just me? That's our challenge, isn't it? We have developed in such a way that our family network, which is developed, created by God, becomes the place that we trust. And God is saying, leave your relatives. Come away from your relatives. Stop trusting your relatives so that you can trust me. Trust the Lord. This is our challenge. We have created a way that we can trust ourselves. We can trust our relatives. Why do I need to trust God when I can trust my relatives? If I have a financial crisis, I can call my, my rich family. If I have a medical crisis, I can call my medical family members. Why do I need to trust God? See, we live in a world where we have eliminated the need to trust God. Then a pandemic comes. Then we're confused. Are we together? And then what happens? People are rushing back to the church. I don't know if you're experiencing it, but people are interested in spiritual things because there's a crisis. Why? Because we cannot trust in the things we can see. We must trust in the one who created everything that is seen and unseen. Abram is told to leave his relatives. Get rid of that trust network and begin to trust in your Creator. Begin to trust in the one who has called you, the one who has set you apart, the one who has filled you with the Spirit. Trust in Him. Begin to trust in that one. That's not easy. It's not just a statement we make, it's a practice we live. Trust is something you develop over time. He's saying, leave those ones that you know. It's easy to trust our relatives. We know them. We know our relatives. We know what they can and can't do. But God is saying, leave them. Now, come on this journey of faith where you learn to trust me. Here's a third statement. Leave your father's house. What is in your father's house? What's in your father's house? I think of two things that are in my father's house. First thing in your father's house, your name, your identity. My name is Jeremy Feller. My dad is George Feller. I carry his name. Those of you that are Ethiopian, you know your name. We know your father by your name. And we know your grandfather, and we know your great-grandfather. We know your great-great-grandfather, if we can go back that, that far. I have a friend. And we would joke because we would go back as far as we can with his name, tracing his, his lineage. He could go back seven names. 
He knows his father's father's father. That's our identity. And God is saying, leave your identity. And find your identity in me. Now I want to be careful, but I think this is something we need to talk about. We have fought for our identity. I am fill in the blank. And what happens? When our identity is not in Christ, it is the source of conflict. So we have ethnic conflicts, not just in Ethiopia, around the world. Conflicts between people that are different because we have identified ourselves as something not coming from the Father. The Father says, find your identity in me. Your identity is not in Brazil or Ethiopia or Amhara or wherever. Your identity is in the Creator who has made us all sons and daughters. Where do you find your identity? Where? It's easy to get nervous about our identity because we can get some mileage out of that. Right? I know my dad is well known in this area. I can get respect immediately by saying, I am the son of. My, my dad is a, a pastor and a teacher in Canada. And I grew up in, in that environment. And so in the ministry circle that we are part of, my dad is well known. So people, oh, you're George's son. They, they see me. They, and all of a sudden it's like, yeah. Then I come to Ethiopia, and nobody knows George. Oh dear, who am I? I am still the Son of God. My dad came to visit, and it wasn't, oh, you're George's son. It's like, oh, you're Jeremy's dad. Right? Whoever is first to be known is the one that everybody relates to. Who is our identity found in? Our Father. Our Father. That's our identity. But there's a second thing found in our Father's house. Our inheritance. We see this through the scripture. The battles about inheritance. We see it fought out among Jacob's sons. You remember the story? We see it fought out among Isaac's sons. We see it determined by Abraham setting aside something for Ishmael and keeping this for Isaac. All through the scripture we see this conflict around inheritance. And we have the same battles today. We see it in the courts here in Addis. Some of you know what I mean. We're all fighting for what's mine. Instead of saying, my inheritance is not here. My inheritance is there. And I live this life not for this moment, but I live this life for an eternal inheritance with my Father. Would I leave this to go for that? That's our challenge, isn't it? Because I kind of want to keep this, and I kind of want to have that. You can't have both. If you hold on to this, you give up that. If you hold on to that, you give up this. Where is your inheritance? Where's your inheritance? What are you looking forward to? What are you going to inherit? Is there going to be some money in a bank that's devalued, rotten? Or is it going to be something of eternal significance? Something from the very throne of God in heaven. Something of a reward given to those who earnestly seek His coming. What identifies you? Where's your inheritance? Are you willing to leave your father's house and really find your identity in the Father? And find your inheritance in the Father? Leave 
what is seen for what is unseen. Leave what is temporal for what is eternal. Then he gives this fourth statement. Those first three statements I found to be encouraging, challenging, but, but I could understand them. This fourth statement I found so difficult. He says, to the land that I will show you. And my mind always goes, how? How am I going to know? Just, just go. I don't just go. I kind of go with a destination in mind. Yes? Are you like me? And here, the Lord says to Abram, Go to the land I will show you. Ah, for my planning mentality, that's a little bit hard to do. I want to know the destination before I start the journey. But this walk with God is not, not that way. It's walk with me today. Keep in relationship with me today. I will guide you today. I'm not giving you the end because you might run away. So I came to Ethiopia 21 years ago. When I first arrived in Ethiopia, I was so excited. Within a couple of weeks, I got very, very, very sick. And I lost 17 kilograms. And I thought I was in trouble. I was in trouble, but you know, you're not feeling so good. And immediately what I thought was so exciting became so terrifying. And then it was like, if I could have seen that, I probably wouldn't have said yes at the beginning. And I went through a number of years of medical issues. I, if I saw that in advance, I would have said no. But in the midst of it, God gives us grace. Every step to lead us through. And if we endure through those difficult moments that we couldn't see at the beginning, after that, we come to these incredible moments of harvest, of new communities of faith, new men and women coming to faith in Christ, new churches planted, new people coming into the family of God. Yes, but we can't see the end at the beginning because we'd probably quit. If you saw everything you had to endure, would you stay? So God gives us the grace for today, the direction for today. We walk through it. We walk through the challenge. We walk through the good times and the bad, holding His hand. That's what He invites us to do. Come with me to the land that I will show you. I don't know if you picked up the word I added there, come with me. He said, go to the land I will show you, but it's come with me. How is he going to show him where the land is? It's because God is with him. The reality of Emmanuel with Abraham. Come with me to the land that I will show you. So are you ready to follow him completely? Day by day, walking in relationship. It's not a five-year strategic plan that you can see the end of. As much as we like those things, it's the day-to-day relationship with our Creator, walking with our Father in relationship, having the fellowship of the Holy Spirit as our guide. That's the invitation. On the other side of these four, the leaving your country, taking the mind of Christ, of, of leaving your relatives and trusting in Christ, of leaving your father's house and finding your identity and inheritance in Christ, of walking with God to the land He will show you. On the other side of that is verse 2 and 3. I want to read this again. And I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great. Sometimes we like to stop there. Right? We like that. That's... Yes, that, that, that's me at the center. But it doesn't stop with me. I am a tool for God to use. So that you will be a blessing. It's not for you. It doesn't end with you. It's that you will be a blessing. Others will know Jesus because of you. See, the promise to Abraham doesn't end with his life. Doesn't end with his death. Continues on 
It's fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And we who walk in the same spirit are able to be partners in being a blessing. It's not just back there, it's finished. We can join in being that blessing. We can join with Abraham in being a blessing of making Christ known, of bringing people into relationship with Jesus Christ. He says, I will bless those who bless you. We kind of like that, yeah? I will, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. Sometimes we stop with those two again, because it centers on me. But it's not about you. It's about in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. From Abraham, his descendant Jesus provides a blessing for all the families of the earth. You and I can participate. Not just receive, participate. You know, we're in the middle of this season of Ramadan now. Just started this past week. We have an opportunity to those in our community that are around us, our friends, our neighbors that don't yet know Jesus. We have an opportunity that they will be part of this promise fulfilled as we participate with Abraham. We have that opportunity. See, it's not just about me. It's God calling me so that others will be blessed. God's call on you doesn't end with your calling. It ends with others being blessed. No matter what your gift or talent or vocation is, it doesn't end with you. It ends with others being blessed. How are they blessed? They're blessed because they have a relationship with their Father in Heaven because of Jesus Christ. They have access to the Father Creator God because of Jesus Christ. Where is that found? On the other side of leaving your country, leaving your relatives, leaving your father's house, and going with God to the land He shows you. Not an easy process, but on the other side of that, you are a blessing. That becomes your nature. You bless people because God has blessed you. As we close this morning, I want to ask you some questions. I want you to reflect, not just be excited, but to reflect. And I have two questions. Number one, what do you need to leave behind? Maybe you've left some of those things behind already. But what do you need to leave behind? What is holding you back from being the blessing that God has called you to be? What's holding you back from walking daily? with your Father? What's holding you back from, from leaving? What, what is it? Is there something that's got a hold of you? This morning you can walk away from that and walk on to the Lord. My, my son Tim, he's, he's eight years old and he loves to run looking back. He always does this since he was a little boy. And at school, he's running through the schoolyard, looking back at the boys and girls chasing him, and he ran into a swing set and smashed his mouth right here. Because he's turned around. That's what happens when we're looking back, trying to run forward. We can't walk to where God's calling us while we're looking back at our family, our relatives, our father's house. We have to be looking at Jesus. So Paul says, I press on towards the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Forgetting what lies behind. That's the invitation. What do you need to leave behind? Second question. Who will be blessed because of you? Who will be blessed because of you? Will the nation of Ethiopia? Will your community? Or does it end just with, with me? I'll be blessed because I chose Jesus. Who will be blessed? Will your community know Jesus because you live there? Will your neighbors know Jesus because you've gone out and shared your hope in Jesus Christ with them? We're coming up to this fabulous holiday called Easter. It's not just a holiday. 
It's the centerpiece of our faith. Jesus died and rose again. He conquered sin, death, and the grave. Who will be blessed because you have faith in Christ today? Who will be blessed? Will you bow with me in prayer this morning? Father, we, we come with a thankful heart. Thankful that we can be together as the body of Christ. Thankful that your word continues to speak and to challenge and to poke and to prod us. Heavenly Father, this morning as we pause to reflect. Lord, if there's something that we need to leave, by your Spirit, speak to us this morning. There's something that's holding us back so that we can't walk in the fullness of your call. Holy Spirit, come. Come by your Spirit and speak to us and convict us where we need to walk away and press on to the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Father, you've placed us in a community. You've placed us around people, some who know you and some who don't. But you filled us with your spirit to be your witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And you've equipped us. You've entrusted us with your gospel. Father, this morning, help us to see who can be blessed because we have been blessed. Father, help us to leave our country and take the mind of Christ. Help us to leave our relatives and trust in Christ. Help us to leave our Father's house and find our identity and inheritance in Christ. And help us to walk with Christ to the land that He shows us. For the glory and the honor of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless. Hey, this is just a reminder. Have you subscribed to our Telegram channel? Not only will you find important announcements, but also access to our daily devotionals, family devotionals, and much, much more. We also want to take this moment to thank you for your generosity and faithfulness throughout the years. Not only is your giving a fragrant and acceptable offering before God, but Paul in 2 Corinthians 9.12 describes it as an expression of ministry. And it is that very ministry that allows us to continue to put our hands to the plow together in the work of reaching people with the message of God's grace and love. You can give through four different avenues. You can stop by your nearest commercial bank, or Braham Bank and deposit your offering into the account number on the screen. You can also take advantage of either bank's mobile banking apps. For those of you who have international major credit cards or debit cards, you can give online on our website, bezachurch.org. And you can always stop by our accounting office on the TK Building 5th floor and they will be happy to serve you there. In this extraordinary and unusual season, we appreciate you going out of your way to give. Thank you. God bless you. በመጨረሻ አንድ ነገር ላስተዋውሳችሁ የቤዛ ቴሌግራም ቻናልን ጆይን ያደርጉ። በቴሌግራም የቤተክርስቲያን ማስተዋቂያ ብቻ ሳይሆን የለታዊ የእግዚአብሔር ቃል ጥናት፣ የቤተሰብ ጥናት እና ሌሎች አጫጭር ነገሮችን ያገኛሉ። በዚህ መንፈሳዊነቱን በመመገብ ይጥቁ። በመጨረሻ ለእግዚአብሔር በታማኝነት እንደቃሉ አስራትና መባቹን የፍቅር ስጦታችሁን ስለምትሰጡ እግዚአብሔር ይባርካችሁ። ለእግዚአብሔር የምትሰጡት ስጦታችሁ በእግዚአብሔር ዘንድ እንደ መልካም ማዕዛ እንደሆነ ቃሉ ያስተምረናል። ይህ ብቻ ሳይሆን ሁለተኛ ቆሮንጦስ ምዕራፍ 9 ቁጥር 12 ላይ እንደሚያስተምረን ለእግዚአብሔር የምናቀርበው አገልግሎታችንም ጭምር ነው። ይህው አገልግሎታችሁ በእግዚአብሔር ያገልግሉት እርሻ ላይ አብልጠን እንድንዘረጋ ሰዎችንም በእግዚአብሔር የጸጋ ቃል እንድንደርስ የሚያደርገን አብረን የምንጠመድበት ያገልግሉት እድል ነው። ስትሰጡ በአራት መንገድ መስጠት ይችላል አላችሁ። 
አንደኛ በቅርባቸው ወደሚገኝ የኢትዮጵያ ንግድ ባንክ ወይም ብርሃን ባንክ በመሄድ ሁለተኛ በተለይም በዚህ እንግዳ ጊዜ በስልካቹ በሚገኝ ሞባይል ባንኪንግ አፕ እንድትጠቀሙ አብልጠንን መከራለን ከኢትዮጵያ ውጪ ላላችሁ ወገኖቻችን ደግሞ በሜጀር ክሬዲት ካርድ ወይም ዴቢት ካርድ በመጠቀም bezachurch.org ድረገጽ ላይ በመሄድ መስጠት ይችላልላችሁ በመጨረሻም በቲኬ ኢንተርናሽናል ህንፃ አምስተኛ ፎቅ ላይ በሚገኘው የቤዛ ሂሳብ ክፍል በመሄድ ለተሰጡት ይችላልላችሁ በዚህ ባልተለመደ እንግዳ በሚመስል ጊዜ ሁሉን አልፋችሁ ለእግዚአብሔር ሥራ ከሌላው ጊዜ አብልጣችሁ ስለተዘረጋችሁ እግዚአብሔር ይባርካችሁ እንወዳችኋለን እግዚአብሔር ይጠብቃችሁ ፊቱንም ያብራላችሁ